what is good people today again from scissor graphics welcome to my how to use background series today we are going to be working on a design sent to me by one of my group members because we just started a new series um, in the group and the idea is for members to send designs that was rejected by their clients so that we can work together on it and make it look more attractive all right so without any further ado let's jump into today's tutorial all right so this was the design sent to me by one of the group members and um we are gonna make this look more professional but before i dive into it allow me share with you the things that i noticed on this artwork that made me think we really need to work on this um first is uh, the design need to be exciting and i noticed that is uh, missing on this project and then the colors must be bright and co and they must combine well all right I realize that that is missing here there are too many colors and the colors are not well um, okay and then i notice again that um the the use of table on this project is too similar and everything looks too choked all right so when you're working on a project like this avoid using the same style of table and then avoid using too many graphic shapes all right when your graphic shapes are too much it makes your design look too busy so i noticed that also and then the characters on your um artwork should not be too bigger than the team because what is going to actually call people's attention is the money part all right so you need to make that bigger than the character I mean, it's good to use characters but you know the the work of the character is to make people believe that what the info on the artwork is talking about is actually true so the face the expression on your character matters also let's go straight to the colors we are going to be using on this project so we are going to be using the split complementary um color harmony and i'm not going to be seeing too much on this but when the project starts you're going to be seeing the touches of all these um colors on the project also we i'm going to be showing you the applications we're going to be using to work on this project because i have three applications i'm going to be using here so we have photoshop which i'm going to be using to draw the to come up with the 3d effect you know i'm going to draw the element i'll be using for this tutorial on illustrator and then lastly i'm going to use indesign to put everything together all right both the element i'm going to i'm going to draw from um, illustrator and then the 3d and the background effect from photoshop now if you are a coral draw user okay you can also use um, coral draw to replace indesign so i have this um, advice i always give to my student that when you are given a project to work on all right before going to your workstation it's always advisable you start your work on the on your analog workstation okay so we are going straight to the analog workstation now so join me so let's start with the layout for this project i'll be using lines and zigzags the zigzag represent the text you don't have to be a great artist to do this that will be the filter of the project next is the title of the project i'm using the stars to call the excitement into the projects the fact that i drew this does not mean is the final destination this is just to know what to start with as the project progresses i'll be adding more other stuff to fine tune it i'm not going to do tutorial on this but it's always good to give your clients options to pick so let's bring this project to life okay so let's start by creating a new document so i'm just going to go to file and i'll click on new okay so first i would like to teach the core draw users how to import a vector file into photoshop okay so i have my color draw open with the elements i'm going to be using for this project and to import this I'm, i need to first of all select it and i'll go to file select publish to pdf and i need to 
click on this setting option here i know some of us have this cities so if this is the first time you're using this it's possible yours is going to look like this all right um it's always like this so you need to um um click here to make this visible and click on these settings here it's going to bring out an option on the screen which is this so select selection only and hit ok then remember to give your project a name you have to select where you want the pdf file to be saved so let's save so if i want to bring this into photoshop now what i'm just going to do is i'll go straight to photoshop like so and i'll go to the exercise file where i save the text so i'm just going to drag it and drop like so so i'll be asked this question just say okay and i have it right here so you can even scale it so because i'm an illustrator user so i'm going to be using illustrator for this project so let's bring in our text I'll copy Control c or command c for mac users and i'm just going to go to photoshop and hit Control v or command v option i'll ask this question i'm just going to select the shape layer option and i'll hit ok and next i'm going to hit Control t or command t for mac users to scale this big and i'm going to just hit enter so let's go straight to the um 3d view so i'm just going to go to 3d menu here and i'm just going to select new extrude version from layer and i'm just going to say yes i'm just going to go straight to my lights so i'll make my shadow i'll move that to 80 to 80 like this and i'll just increase the brightness just a little bit not too much and then for the environment i'm going to just um reduce the opacity of my shadow which is the shadow that always appear at the bottom of the text here so i'm going to make that zero and i'm going back to the light again i'm going to push it to this angle like so and for the front um, inflection material of my text which is the front um, color i'm just going to change that to something i can easily pick when i start um using the magic wand on it so i'm just going to move that to something around here and i'm going to select okay so for the um extrusion material which is the um side i'm going to use something more orange yeah, right like this i'm just going to hit okay and let's preview it to see what it looks like click on this button now to start loading okay so you notice i have this um text on my um on my 3d here which is not part of the plan so i'm going to hit escape and i'll go to the material of the front uh inflation material here and i'm just going to choose blue i'm going to choose this blue color and i'll go back here and choose another shade of color that i know that uh, it will be easy for me to pick all right now avoid using the same color with your extrusion all right so i'm just going to hit okay all right so let's see what it looks like now so you have to wait for photoshop to render the 3d before you can use it because if you look at the uh, texture of my 3d here you see everything looks like there's noise on it so we have to wait for photoshop to render it so as to take out those noise and we will be able to use it on our project so we have to wait for this to get to 100 percent and um, as you can see now you see that my 3d text is already looking real those noise effect is no more on my uh, text so if this gets to 100 percent it means we are good to go right so it means my 3d is ready we need to i'm going to click on the layer tab here now and as you can see my my workspace is on the 3d interface so i have to change this back to my preferred um look so i'm just going to go to windows workspace and select cg thoughts i'm going to right click and say convert to smart objects all right so the next thing i'm going to do is to now uh, create the document for this project i'm going to go click on file and select new and i'm going to change this to international paper size and i'll use a4 i'm just going to select okay so this is it so let's bring in our 3d text i'm just going to come here drag this and drop like so and i'm going to make my background so i'm going to hide the 3d layer 
I need to even give it a name, so I'm just going to call it 3D, 3D text. All right. So let's um, bring it. Let's just start adding colors. So I'm just going to come here and I'm going to use this shade of blue right here, like so. This shade of blue, like so. And hit OK. I'll create a new layer. I'll open up Alt. Alt and click and I'll call this um, blue one because I'm going to be using different shade of blue so I'm going to hit all backspace to add the color of my foreground all right and I'm going to make a new, a new layer again and I'll call this blue two two all right then I'll come here and you know push this up to about this angle like so all right so I I'm going to just uh, Select the brush to make sure I'm on the soft hand brush like so. And I'm just going to click. All right. And I'll hit Ctrl T on my keyboard and I'll scale this big just like so. All right. Then I'll add another lighter shade of blue. So I'm going to call this blue 3. So next I'll zoom in again. The brush to go here and I'll push it to about this angle all right and I'm going to just click and now this should just be a bigger a little bit less like so then let's bring in our next um, vectors Control C on my keyboard and command C for Mac users and I'll go to um, the, my project and I'm gonna hit command V or Control V on my keyboard so I'm gonna select the shape um, layer so as to be able to not lose quality when I start increasing and reducing the size of the shape. So next I'm going to go to the um, FX button here that is the effect button. I'm sorry you can't see it but I'm just going to select the blend option here and we are going straight to the um, inner glow option which is this and I'm going to make this visible like so and the size we need to dial that up like so all right so this is the size of this uh, a little bit like so all right and i'm gonna make a copy of this all right and i'll hit ctrl t or command t on my keyboard and i'll scale with the i mean rotate it sorry and i'll hold on up and scale this big like so but this time i need to dial the opacity of this down to about this point and then the one beneath also i need to reduce the opacity just like so all right let me just do this big a little bit like so all right then i need to put this in a group so i'm just going to call this light. i need to put it my background also in a group so i'm just going to call the bg so next we need to add vector max to this all right, because I don't want everything here to be this visible, so I'm going to select the brush tool. Now, make sure the foreground color is set to black. Now, if I make my 3D visible, you see I have this. So next, I need to reduce the size of my 3D layer just a little bit, like so. Still need to brush this side of this layer and this side of this layer like so next i'll add it again and i'll make a new layer and i'll call this circle all right and i'm going to zoom in to about this point now select the uh ellipse tool here and i'll hold down shift and drag all right hold down shift and drag like so so i'm going, just going to come here click on this box here and i'm going to choose this shade of orange like so all right now remember i was telling you uh, before we get to this level of tutorial that i'll be using the split complementary color harmony all right so that's where i'm getting these colors i'm using from okay so then i'm going to just make sure that my 3d is on top of it like so and i'm just going to scale this big so I'm going to be making my 3D visible and I'll be turning it off, all right? So I'm going to make it big like so. And I'm going to hide the layer again. I'll create a new layer and I'll call this brush, all right? So for this one, I'm just going to use red, 
all right like so and i'm going to just select the brush tool with the b key on my keyboard and i'll just brush this side of the layer so i'm going to hold down ctrl alt and g all right to put that brush in the shape all right so for mark use that is command option and g on your keyboard all right so i'm just going to select the move to and i'm just going to position this somewhere around here so what i'm going to do now is to hold down shift and drag this and drop on this icon here to make a copy of it and i'll hit the ctrl t on my keyboard and I'll scale this down and i'm going to just rotate it like so and this should be somewhere around here like so all right it's gonna still look bigger so all right so i'm gonna make my 3d visible again see yes I have it on the right position so i'm just going to hide it again and now i will need to start adding shadows all right so to add shadow to this i'm going to hold on control make a light layer in between the two layers and i'll call this shadow okay okay and this time i'll change this to black all right this should be black and i'll fill it with black with all backspace next i'm going to just drag this down a little bit and i'll go to filter Blur, Gaussian, Blur, Light, Cell. So let's use the quality of this. Let's see. So next, I'm going to hit OK and reduce the opacity. And so make a copy of it again. All right. And I'm just going to go to Filter, Blur, Motion Blur. And this time, I'm just going to bump this like this. All right. And yeah, I'm just going to hit OK. So as you can see, I'm having this shadow effect on this side of the circle. So I don't want that. So I'm going to hit the razor to increase the size of my brush. Make sure you're using the soft round brush on your razor tool and just take out that part from the layer like so. So we need to add shadow to the one, to the big circle. So I'm just going to do the same thing I did previously. All right, so we need to put this in a group. So I'll select everything here like so, and I'll hit Ctrl G on my keyboard and call this circle. Now let's bring our 3D layer now, and I need to select the front color of my 3D. So I'll use Magic Wand 2 to do that. So I'm just gonna click here, and I'll click here to select this. Click here to select this. Select to select this. Select the five. Like so, so here, right so so next is to create a new layer so i'm gonna fill it with um yeah i think i like this color so what you can do is to you can copy this code just in case you want to use the same color i'm using here so i'm just gonna say okay and i'm just gonna hit all backspace to fill that layer with the color create a new layer okay like so but we need to put this layer inside the 3d text so i'm, I'm going to go hold down ctrl alt and g to put that in the 3d text and next is to go to the gradient to here and i'm just going to um show you guys the code for the color that i use anyway the colors are from the uh, background here but just in case you want to use the same color you can always come here and you know copy the code now okay so i'm going to hit okay so you can pause the video to copy the code of the color so i'm going to hit okay again so the same color i use here is what i use here the one i use here is the one i use here and i'm just going to for those of you that don't know how to add wheels because i'm sure some of you will just have two wheels on your gradient too so just in case you want to add more wheels you can just click down here and then you have the wheels if you want to delete any of the wheels just click on it and drag it down so if you want to add it back just click again and then you have it right there and i'm just going to click okay now and the next thing I'm going to do is to select this gradient option up here, which is this. Now, before I drag, so I'm going to go to select, modify, and I'm going to select contract. So my option should be six, like so, and I'm going to select OK. So what I'm going to do next again is to hit the Control Shift I to inverse the selection. And I'm just going to click from here and drag like so and i'm just going to hit the ctrl d on my keyboard to deselect now you see i have that light effect around 
my text like so you can even boost the color by going to curve and i'm just going to you know push that out like so all right i'm just going to do that like so now the next thing i want to do is to go to the uh my brush tool i'm making a new layer again all right and i'm going to put this inside the same layer by holding on ctrl alt and g and i'm going to select the brush tool and make sure this is set to black all right and next reduce the size of the brush and i'm just going to brush i'm going to reduce the opacity like this all right now let's now make this look more real so we need to add shadow at the back of um, our 3d text so let me just move this to somewhere around this angle so i'm just going to hold down control and click on the thumbnail of the 3d layer and i'm going to just hit ok so i'm using the same effect i used when i applied shadow to the circles just going to hit the ctrl d filter blur version blur all right i'm going to hit ok and this should be somewhere around here like so so I make a copy of this i'll go to filter blur Blur. All right, so I'm going to reduce the opacity just a little bit. So push this in, and I'll hit Ctrl T on my keyboard and just scale this in like so. Put everything in a group by hitting Ctrl G while everything is selected, and I'll call this the theme. So the next thing we are going to do is to add our stars. I have the star now open in Photoshop. How I was able to come up with this star the same way I did with the 3D text. All right. So because of time, I don't want to make this tutorial too long. So just try the same move that I did on the text on the star. So I'm just going to drag and drop like so. So I'm going to right click now and change, convert it to a smart objects. And I'm going to push that up like so. And reduce the size of um, the star I'm just going to po randomly position the star where I want it so I'm going to call this yellow star and I'll make a copy again and I'll call this one red star I need to scale this bit because I'm about to change the color. So I'm going to make it big like so. And the next thing I'm going to do is to come to my hue adjustment here and choose colorize. And I want it to apply to just only the layer. And I'll push this to red like so. This is the best red. I'm just going to mesh the layers by holding by selecting two layers and hit ctrl e on my keyboard or command e for mac users so i'm just going to um scale this down like so so i'm going to randomly position everything so this will be somewhere here So next, I'm going to put everything in a group and I'll make a copy of it to make more, to add more stairs. So I'm just going to call this stairs and I'm going to make a copy of this and I'm just going to hit Ctrl T and I'll select the um, rotate 180 degree option and this should go down to about um, this side. So. I'm going to do this just to make it look like um, it's a little different. So, and I'll make a copy of this again, but this time this should be below the team and the circle. And I'm going to drag this big like so. And this time I'll use the same option. 
online, I'm presenting here. Right click, convert to smart objects. So I'll go to filter again. I'll select blur and select, uh, I mean, blur gallery. Excuse me, I'm gonna select the view blur. So I am just gonna click OK. I'll make a copy again. This time I'll, I'll use another filter. So I'm gonna convert to smart object again. Blur. Radio blur zoom. I'm gonna select the zoom option here at this point and I'll hit OK. Nice. So that should be somewhere here, like so. Somewhere here, I'll add a vector mask and I'll brush it. Put the size of my brush. Make sure this is set to black and I'm just going to brush out. Flow should be 100, like so. And I'll make a copy of this and this one be somewhere here and I'll hit the control I on my keyboard to invert that vector mask box. So the next thing I'm going to do is to add the pictures of um, our characters. I'm going to go to the exercise file now and bring in the picture of my characters like so. I'm just going to select this. Um, characters, so I'm just going to right click on this one, add the vector mask to it, select the brush tool, and I'll just take it off its face like so. Alright, I think I'm still seeing another red star here. Select brush again, make sure you want the vector mask box. I'm just going to brush it out like so. Is I'm going to put everything in a group. So I'll hit the control G on my keyboard and I'll call this. I'm going to make a copy of this. I'll hide this one. I'll convert this to uh, a smart object. I need to change the color of this blue here. It's looking too deep for me. So I'm just going to select the hue saturation option here and I'll click on this icon here and click on the color and just reduce the saturation. color to the back like what I'm about to do now. I'm just gonna make a layer and I'll call this glow and this should be behind this layer and I'll select the brush tool and I'll scale this right so I think I overdo this so I'm just gonna use the opacity just a little bit. I'm going straight to InDesign to add the final part of this project. My layout now is different from what I do in the beginning of this tutorial. So I realized that I still need to add this, all right, to the project. And the only way I can do that is to move this to uh, tables here to do this side. And then this can fit in here, all right? So when you draw a layout, like I said in the beginning, that doesn't mean that's the final look of your project. It's just to start the project for you, just for you to know what you can start with. 
okay guys so i hope you enjoyed today's tutorial and i'm going to be posting more tutorials for you guys so if you have not subscribed don't forget to hit the subscribe button so you will be notified when i post my tutorial so i'll see you guys in my next tutorial peace